driving And a car full of niggas straight drove in I thought they were coming to start trouble But no, five niggas in a bucket with the neighborhood hoe Now what do you expect, they're gonna dog her like a doggy Thirty minutes later and the windows were all foggy And I'm up in my car having a fit Cause the bitch that I'm with said no fucking on the first day shit And I'm like, damn, I wish I was in the bucket To be the sixth nigga with the hoe so I could fuck it So I told the bitch I was with, I was going to the snack bar And got the fuck out the car Went to the bucket and I looked through the window It was some niggas that I knew that let me in, yo And my turn was like, next I couldn't see a face, all I saw was a pussy in the chest I wanted to see that's all I got <laughs> Veterano, old family first fam Taught the world to swing that double-edged sword It works fam BJJ from GJJ Like cool hurt gave birth to what your DJ plays But despite the lineage I will never be closed-minded Refuse to see beyond the lines You go blind Rocker travels the 10th planet I flow free I'm welcome on mini mats Gee to no gee Though my branch traces is roots to the original tree Who sprouted from the original seed Water with blood, sweat, and tears Spotlight with sunlight that tree became a forest, ballet Tudo done right Then voice dominated them all in one night And hate song hasn't been beaten in one fight Flow with the gold, hit a hit on and holly know That to continue to win, we must continue to grow Let's go! That's what you get, for you kick me in the balls Everybody pay attention. Today we have a very special installment of the Renate Laranja interview. This concern, something that happened with a very important fighter, one of the great fighters of all time. That's Juni Browning, and my protege. What's up? As you can see, he's back. And we're so glad to have him back. He's so proud for you to be here. Because I was so worried for you. I'm glad you were concerned. I was to have everybody to call me. They say, you know, Johnny Brown, that guy's a piece of shit. That guy was called to the bar. He was taking, and he was some girl trying to talk to him. He was taking machete, cut that girl's arm off. He, then he break a fucking bottle over that girl's head. And then he tried to rape that girl. And some little Chinese guys was trying to attack him. He was he stopped those guys. And then that Chinese mafia is come to get you. And then some guys is gonna do some stuff like that. You have your sex with some transvestite. Your girlfriend is you murder that girlfriend. You jump from the window, come to the hotel, the hospital. Mm -hmm. They was you put some treatment for your brain. Was a shock treatment, mm -hmm. give you a lobotomy. You take that stuff like that, like the movie with Benicio, Benicio del Toro. Mm -hmm. Is it like it? it the werewolf, it, where the guys he put the experiment for you, and then you go. I'm gonna show, show you guys if you're gonna keep Juni Brown to be this place. I'm gonna take like that, and I'm gonna jump from the window, and then I'm gonna come back to call Chris Ryan. We're gonna gonna help. It couldn't be any more accurate than that. Well, that's the problem. Is I was telling everybody that's not true, and I was to defend you, and they know when you what you're gonna do in another country is a reflection. Coming for me. That's what I was trying to do the entire time. Yeah, I was trying to you. That was my number one concern. First thing when that happened, I go, if he was there, none of this would have went down. That's true. None of it. But my number one concern is for you not to go to that place and do that kind of stuff like that. You're supposed to be trained. You're supposed to chew. And the last time, I tried, tried to lose some weight. Yeah, now you have a shit eating grip for, for your face. It's better that you was to eat shit than you was to eat that stuff so you put your mouth. You was to eat pad chai. You was to eat... Some, uh, some beef skewer, have some peanut butter sauce for that. And you was lit, drink some beers and chalk a lot of shit, smoke some cigarettes, drive some scooters. And you, you want to drive scooters drunk. You want to act like, a, like you, you're the king of the world. Everybody, you think you still want the tough. You think you is the tough enough. You think you still want the tough show for 
UFC, but you're gonna be fight for tough enough if you're not careful. That'll be a step up for me. That's right. Because I'm the only guy who was have faith in you. They and pay by the pound down there. They don't have weight classes. I have to gain weight. Now you you think for me once, I'm gonna quote one of the great president we have from the country is a white guy. It's George Bush. He said, here in, in Crawford, Texas, we have a saying. It goes like that. Fool me once. Shame, shame on you. Fool me. God, I am not going to be fool. You're not going to be fool again. So I'm not going to let you to fool me. I'm going to be on you. I'm going to betray you. I'm going to be on you like a white guy is on rice. <laughs> and you think that's funny, but it's not going to be funny when we're going to train. Because it's going to be like in my favorite R&B group, a blood sweat and cheers. That's good, man. And you're going to remember that. And they have, a, they have a song that you also can remember for that. It's called, it goes like that. What goes up, it must come down. Because that's what's gonna happen if you're not gonna listen to me. So you have to tighten up your game. And I wanna ask you something. Tell me that tell me that that he's new you you was it you was it come back. Uh pretty much I mean my number one concern when all that went down is I'll, if I would ever see you again. I really just need that support system that you you offered me. I mean literally, I mean when I honestly thought I was gonna die, I went to tears just thinking about the times we had together and how much fun and the technique I was losing just by being involved with that culture. I mean, it just, I was losing all my jiu-jitsu being down there. Let me tell you something. I lost faith in everything. In I know you do that. You're like a dad to me. I'm still gonna be like a dad. I'm not gonna turn my back for you. I mean, just have to speak like that for you. I have to speak tough. It's called the tough love. And it's called something like that, it's a scared straight. Uh, you can't touch, you can't, you can't touch that. Because a lot of people want to get some strength from that. Okay, I'm not, I'm not worried if that I'm going to be gay, you're not going to be gay. Oh, no, no, that was in Thailand, I was drunk and got a little rambunctious. Gotta, come here, because I'm going to, come here. This, no, no, no words, only emotions. Thank you. I really miss you down there. I was he miss you too, Judy Bonnie. Just a hug, just a sweet embrace. Can feel good to do this sometimes too. I've been to do this since I've been in Thailand. I've never thought I'd see you again. You don't have to worry about those Chinese guys not gonna attack you no more. Mm -hmm. I, Thai, but close enough. Same thing. Ching Chang Ping Pong. I really appreciate the support. I didn't have any of that down there. I would have got a hold of you quicker, but I couldn't even read street signs, let alone know where I was at. I'm gonna take you under my wing. I just, I'm been stepping back. I can't wait to do Gi again. They don't want to have those down there. They just believe in punching and kicking each other. Sometimey, you have so much stress. It's overwhelming. It causes depression, anxiety, narcolepsy, and narcophilia. And you know, one one ways to get get rid of that. Some chime there. Oh, also can use some jacuzzi. That's a whirlpool bath. Can add some Epsom salt. That sounds awesome. Then something also gonna take the pain away from you and from your mind. Is it painkillers? No, it's a, oh. it's can kill the pain. It's called MGMA. Yeah, it's that's ecstasy. Awesome. I did that at a Dead Mouse concert. It was amazing. You don't wanna talk about Dead Mouse. Oh. Okay. Hey, that guy said have your name with some numbers. I don't like that stuff. We're gonna, we're gonna take a jacuzzi, gonna listen to some Cherry Pendergrass, can have some key sweat. I know you wanna hear some H. Kelly, we can throw that. So you're not disappointed with me or you still, you still, you still have my back to support me? I have your back and your front. You're the, good, that's the only person I'm concerned with.
relax. You're gonna heal. You're gonna relax. I'm, I'm sleeping. Alright guys, there's a lot of new faces here to, today. Some of you guys have experience, some of you not so much experience. What's your story, sir? Uh, I've been training uh, fighting since 2009. Okay. Blue belt under Hinato Migliaccio and Glendora. Blue belt? Sample PJJ, yeah. Okay, nice, nice. Where's that? Uh, Glendora, about 30 oh, miles. Okay. Yeah. okay, cool. Um, so, all this, all last week and the rest of this week, is Nick Lentz week, UFC fighter. He's here for two weeks, everybody. <laughs> um, we've been basically doing cra crash courses on the rubber guard and deep hook transitions to spider web. Very huge. So always going to sprinkle in the Japanese necktie. And we're gonna, this week we're going to get into some, some twister stuff as well. All right, so... Um, a couple weeks ago at the Ultimate Absolute in New York, um, there was a lot of guys playing Spiral Guard, and it was very hard to pass Spiral Guard. Very few passes on Spiral. It was almost impossible. Samuel Braga, he attempted Spiral Sweeps going underneath at least 30 times, something like that. And it was, you know, it was hard... To, for anybody to pass that spiral guard, except for Justin Rader. Justin Rader went old-fashioned, BJJ, old school. He just went underneath, and he went underneath instead of going over the top of all that spiraling and inversion, going underneath it, old school. Get all of that out of you. No, if you go underneath someone, if you're able to get underneath, there's no danger of leg locks, and as long as both arms are underneath, you're not gonna get triangled. You can get um, triangled without any arms. Some guys are really good at that, so you gotta watch that. But nonetheless, the pass right into the truck was crucial. Justin Rader did it twice. He underpassed him and transitioned right into the truck. And he went for calf cranks and that, the whole battle from both the times he was in the truck. Epic battle. Find that on the internet. Justin Rader against Samuel Braga. Amazing match. I hope um, he was the only one that really passed. Um, and so we're going to start with just the basics of the underpass. Um, Dempsey. I can pass over the top or I can pass underneath. But if, I, if I'm going underneath, i got to get his hips off the ground. He's going to be doing everything to keep his hips on his ass on the mat. So I gotta get underneath, and some guys you can get underneath, some guys you can't. It all depends on how strong you are at lifting his hips up and controlling him and using your weight to smash down on him. Very important. So we're going to, just, just to get the basics down, we're just gonna reach underneath, wrap around, gable grip his arm, or, or gable grip your hands together, and just push forward, get up on your toes, forearm across the neck, my right hip ends up holding his hips up, and my right knee is in his back, directly in his back, I'm holding him up, here. So it's just, here I push into him, my chest is in the back of his right hamstring, my forearm, left forearm is in his neck, my right hand is holding his hips up, so it's, Gable grip here, pushing forward, and then here. My right hand and my right knee are, is keeping, they're keeping his hips off the ground. And then I'm gonna
just got my first finger up the ass at 47 years old. You understand? I wrote 47 years to tap out on the finger. I, I have like a little finger up there, my own, just to get the party started sometimes. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna put those strings and sniff and get the fucking blood going. Sometimes you're dead. Your left arm is dead. You gotta get the party started. You get whacked off of your right arm and improvise. You know? For a checkup, like, I even forgot about the finger up the ass. I was concerned with the blood, because I'm a half a fag. I can't see fucking needles or blood. All week, I'm like, I'm gonna faint. He's gonna fucking do shit to me. I get down, and I'm more worried about my arms. I look down the table, and I got this little dress on with your ass out. I'm like, oh, fuck. Because the first thing you think about is, did I work right this morning? You know what I mean? I'm one of those three white motherfuckers. My ass is burning like a hot bend on the top of the I'm back in there while I'm watching all along. You follow me, fuck? So I'm thinking the whole time, I got this muffler's all fucked up. He's gonna stick a finger in there and think I'm a slob and shit. <laughs> but doctors know how to finger bang in the muffler. They do it right. They take their time. You know what I'm saying? They give you a diversion. They're like one of those magicians in Vegas that get bit by lions and shit. <laughs> they fucking put the thermometer on your back and feel your shit. Breathe, breathe. You're breathing. Then they made me lay down. And he put me in the fucking nucleus position. What's that shit when you're like this? The Brock Lesnar position when you block that shit, right? <laughs> and fuck you, Pop Lesnar. It's the Anderson Cooper position now, you know what I'm saying? So next thing you know, I'm on the Brock Lesnar position. I'm the microphone out my back listening to the fucking lungs. You know, and all of a sudden out of nowhere, I just feel this finger go off my ass, but it was intense because I felt the finger in my belly button tickling around. And I thought about all the time that I took a finger up a woman's ass and she popped up while she was doing dishes or something. And my car came back and butt in the ass. <laughs> then it gave me a towel and I was wiping myself. I thought I shit myself for sure. I had that fucking pharmaceutical pre it ain't sticky. That's how I can tell it. You know? My pre-cum will stick to the sheets for a week, bitch. You follow me? <laughs> we are here in Stockholm, Sweden. Sverige. What'd you just say? Sverige. Don't speak English, please. What'd I cannot. Say? I'm uh, I'm Swedish, and I mm. like uh, meatballs. <laughs> oh. So what's up? Uh, what's up today? What the hell are we doing here in Stockholm, man? Well, this crazy little. I have my master here. We're gonna do a tenth planet seminar, and uh, I think it's gonna be a lot of people attending, especially now when the Korean zombie has been playing around. Okay, so what brought you to 10th Planet, please? Well, I've always been like unorthodox and um, always searching for new styles, new techniques. And uh, I'm two, two or five, and people in, in that size normally are not that flexible. So um, I'm quite flexible. So uh, and you're, a, you're a black belt under the De La Hiva. Uh, yeah, uh, lineage. Yeah, which is not too common in the Tenth Planet Empire as of as of yet. We don't really have too many outside black belts becoming affiliates. I think you're actually the only outside black belt who is an affiliate. Yes, and that feels good. <laughs> and, and that doesn't happen that often. No. And, and why did it happen with you? And is, and De La Hiva is cool with it. Yeah, De La Hiva. He doesn't care too much about anything. He is happy, even. Anyone doing jiu-jitsu, it's, it's, he doesn't care. I mean, he's a six-dan black belt. He has people coming to his academy in, in Copacabana, Rio, um, from all over the world, from Gracie Baja, Alliance. It doesn't matter. He, he treats everyone very nice, and he never said a bad word about anything. And if you show him anything, uh, he's happy to watch and and tell him because I mean De La Hiva guard is De La Hiva guard he's a legend and at that time the, that kind of guard was not done 
normal either. I mean, it was very unorthodox. So, you know, he has no problem with these things. Even, even uh, uh, a De La Hiva student, who is also a third dan black belt and a judo black belt, he's been in the national team and he, he's my mentor in, in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. And he doesn't care either. I mean, he, I showed him the lockdown and he was amazed. It was so good. And I, he, he tried to, to get out from it, from it when I was, you know, was playing around with it. And uh, he likes it a lot. Nice. It's beautiful. Old town Stockholm, right? Yeah. Actually, that's old town. Okay. So what, okay, so uh, we, we touched on your little, um, uh, your history with De La Hiva. So now you're here in Stockholm, running 10 Planet Stockholm. And the, the difference between your school, your affiliate, and most of my affiliates is you're... You're, you're turning Ten Planet system into a gi based system. You're combining the gi and Ten Planet, which yeah. is very interesting. No, because the thing is, like, to be honest with you, and and anyone who's using the gi, a lot of Tenth Planet techniques are are suited for gi in 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 my perspective. I mean, uh, think about all these things you can do with the gi because you have the handles already. I mean, it's there. As you say, janking and pulling, but everyone is janking and pulling. But if you have a, a, a clinch game with handles already there, I mean, it's it's beautiful. It's a, it's it's so many techniques that are suited for gi. So you know, I love tenth planet. That's nice. why I'm here, right? Tenth planet with the gi. Yeah, Planet X Jiu Jitsu. That's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. Putting a little twist on yeah. the gi game. Yeah. It's I... not it's not pure tenth planet, but it's tenth planet enough. So we're calling it Planet X Jiu Jitsu. Yeah. Right? yeah. Nice, nice. I like that. We'll no. see how that turns out. Yeah, because even though some, some academies, you know, maybe just have three times no gi and they choose to to uh uh, train with gi, even if they don't put too much attention to it, uh, the style is, 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 you know, with the Planet X, it's, I mean, it's unbelievable what, what you can, all the electric chair, you, you get anyone. It's so easy to do the electric chair. For me, it's like, well, it's on, on YouTube and it's everywhere, but they don't know it. And you, caught, you, you, you catch them all the time, all the time. The twister side control where you, can hold, side where you control. can hold the pants. Oh my God! Is twister it, side control where you can hold the pants. That's how I, you know, I did it to John Jocks. I was doing a lot of the Ten Planet stuff. You know, the stuff that was evolved back then. At that point, I was doing it all with the gi, and it's it's a, if you're playing if you have a clinching game and then you have a you're playing with the gi, it's actually in a lot of ways easier to get the clinch yeah. when you could hold on to their you know, sleeves, and then you transfer up to the elbows, and you go up to the collars. It's a lot easier to clinch up when uh, you, your opponent has a gi. Yeah. You know, you just have to develop a clinching style. Uh -huh. If you uh -huh. don't have a clinching style, well, then you don't have that advantage. Yeah, so, that's right. you know, that's what we're doing here with, with Planet X Jiu-Jitsu. You know, actually, you know, uh, twisted side, side control is so good. So, I even named the, the half guard to twist the half guard, uh, twist the half what did I What did I say? Twister? Half twister side control. You better I look think. at your notes, man. Look yeah. at your notes. Yeah. Okay, so we're here. Twister half. Ah, so we're here at, uh, what's up with this, this, is this an auditorium that we're at or something? This is actually not your school. This is a, No, it's another was... academy that they, they, they come and train at our academy. So we have like my people going there and, and, and their people going to my place. And uh, actually, you had too many people, right? Yeah, yeah. And this is uh, Stockholm's, or actually Sweden's, Sweden's biggest academy, uh, with a lot of people. So we're gonna see, I I guess over a hundred people attending. Beautiful. Let's check it out. Yeah. Let's do it. We got Richie Rich here. What's up, Rich? How's it going? Um, Nottingham. Eventually, we'll have that tenth planet in Nottingham. Eventually. He's coming. It's coming. He's coming. All right. All right. Cool. All right. Let's do this. Uh, here's here's uh, Andreas. He's the the coach of Alexander Gustafsson. He's the give UFC. Huh? Uh, 
and and uh, he's been at our place training. Yeah. <laughs> nice. You got little handles on those bags. Yeah. yeah. We haven't gotten there yet, man. That's beautiful. Let's go. This twister for you, man. Oh, this is the Swedish twister. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> well, state your name, Mr. Swedish twister. Uh, Mikael. Mikael. Mike. 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 Yeah. Mikey Mikey boy. Boy. Nice. Nice. Beautiful. The funny thing is that this is their entrance is where everyone takes a piss after they've been out and partying, so it smells like shit there. <laughs> That's nice. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, people drink piss, so it's yeah. not as not as bad as people. Yeah, think. but they always go to this door and piss on the door. So. <laughs> I think pee has gotten a bad rap over the last hundred years. Yeah. It's gonna make a comeback. <laughs> Probably. Oh, you you smell it? I like Ammoniac. it. Ammoniac. I like it. it. Has vitamins and minerals in it. Oh, here's my sister and yeah. my wife. Hello. 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 How you doing? Honey? There is Alexander, the UFC, this oh, upcoming star. What's up, man? The best of a uh, UFC fighter in all of Sweden, right? Yes, it's true. Nice, nice, cool. <laughs> I've seen you fight several times, although my memory is foggy because I watch so many fights. Uh, <laughs> you know, I have to go back and rewatch them, but I know you're good. Yeah, thanks, man. Thanks. Awesome. It's going to be a top ten for sure. I give you 100%. <laughs> Nice. 100%. Looking good? Looking good. Yeah, we have people here from Poland, Germany. Uganda anywhere? No Uganda? Nothing? Nothing. Oslo, nice. Where? Oslo. Oslo? Oslo? Norway. Norway. Okay, okay. You know Joachim Hansen? I That's your boy? Him, but we know about him. He's, nice, he's nice. the national fighter. Like, nice. Okay, cool. Where are you from? I'm Sweden. Sweden? Yeah. Born and raised? Yeah. Nice. All right.
You got to be able to. transition that a white kid from Oklahoma did a um, multiple BJJ world champion. Nobody was passing the inverted. I, I really didn't see anybody passing. It was so hard to pass. And by inverted, Dempsey's really good. The guys were school. Once we're once underneath here, man, it's, it's a mess. We gotta we gotta retreat. We gotta swamp walk and get the hell out of here. And what we saw is man there's guys that have nice little dances over a spiral. Like Joel Tudor was just dancing over the defending spiral on Samuel Brown. He just kept going underneath Joel Tudor. Professional surfer. surfer surfing translates that balance on the surfboard. You hit where you're holding that. That's a, that's a horse dance, man. You know what I mean? <laughs> surfing translates because he was on top of Samuel Brown and he just was like, he, 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 he did it on this side. Yeah, he would just sit down. He would sit down and just kick him off. And just pull out. And then same thing, he goes underneath. He'd sit down, play with his feet here, and come back. He did it a million times. It was amazing. Um, Samuel Brown got like, eked it out. He did, went on points. He did like sweep them once, I think. And um, so then D Justin Rader, college wrestler, I don't know if he was a D1 All American or whatever, but he's a black belt in Jiu Jitsu. He's Rafael Lovato's black belt. He's got some insane balance. Never seen against Cobrina last year at the Nogi World. Cobrina's probably top three at Spiral in the world, if not the best. And Justin Wade was just like, pulling out of all his shit. <laughs> he was doing all that shit. It was incredible. And then he goes against Samuel Braga. He beats Ryan Hall. And he got out of Ryan Hall 50-50, put Justin Rader, uh, Ryan Hall put Justin Rader in 50-50. Justin Rader got out of that shit. It was close, but he got out. Very few people get out of Ryan Hall 50-50. It's pretty amazing. And so he's, now he's against Samuel Braga. He's doing his little dance. It wasn't exactly like Joel Tudor's, but his was a little, uh, uh, uh. I don't know what the hell he was doing, but it was a little different. And then he, Rafael Lovato goes, I want you to do it. Do what you did at Naga in in 09 or something. He says, Oh, it's in Chicago. Oh, Chicago? <laughs> and he says, okay. And he did it. He 
He grabbed his legs, pulled him to the side, set him up, and he was as, as if he's coming back, he went underneath, and when he, he followed him, because the, the counter to the underneath pass, once you know you can't put your hips back down on the mat, the counter to the underneath pass, if I get him up here and I think I'm gonna pass, he's like, fuck you, you're not. These motherfucking planes are making clouds that last for days. How? Apparently, from their exhaust. Now, what kind of fucking exhaust system does this to the sky? The world should be outraged. The company that makes that exhaust system for these planes, they should be fucking all hung. Look at that. this leg up and let the leg come to you. So again, I got inside position, he re-grips, my left hand comes off, drags this step. Now I'm just gonna get my head's gonna go right, gonna look right into his stomach right here and drive. And the leg's gonna come up right to me. I'm not picking that leg up, it's coming to me. Again, inside position, re-grips. Now our finish, from here we're just 